So uh, this talk was inspired when I heard someone say that you should automate everything. At first I was like, yeah. And then I was like, well, there's probably some cases where that's not vacuously true. Um, and so I think you should automate everything with an asterisk. And this talk is that asterisk. Um, this is not an anti-automation talk. It is an automate with respect talk. So um, I'm going to be talking um, about what automation is and why we do it. Um, and then the real meat of this talk is providing a framework for deciding whether or not to automate something. Um, as you can probably already guess, there's a lot of gray area and it's very case by case, but I want to give you a set of questions to ask um, to determine if something should or should not be automated. And then we will explore automation gone wrong, which is uh, very fun. So. Um, Automation, I think a lot of us probably know this definition already, but it is basically any process that happens without human assistance, um, so kind of machines. Um, I think I tend to think of this in a very modern sense of like software automation, because that's what I like spend all day doing. Um, but like this is the fourth technological revolution. Like we've been making machines do stuff for us for a really long time. Um, so again, not anti-automation, printing presses, pretty great. Um, so that's kind of what automation is. And there's a lot of really compelling reasons why we do it. So the rest of the talk is going to be all the bad things about automation. But I did want to want to start with, like, um, there are some really good reasons to automate things. Um, and so saving time and money is the really obvious one. Uh, for consistency, stability, and fewer mistakes, uh, machines can just do that. Um, another one that I think a lot of people don't consider is visibility into a process. So by automating something, you're inherently like writing it down and codifying it. And that makes it oftentimes easy to share with other people, to share with future people who might come across this process. Um, and it gives everyone kind of a shared understanding of like how this thing might work. Um, because then it, it's not just one person doing it. Um, and then the last and I think most underrated reason why we automate things is because we don't enjoy something. And I'm going to get on my soapbox for a minute. Uh, I think that especially in America, we have this idea that um, if you enjoy your work, it's like icing on the cake. Um, and I hate to tell you that work is the cake. Like you spend so much time um, doing uh, tasks, uh, I guess, for work or not for work. And if you're not enjoying them, like that's your life. Um, and so I think that automating things like making non-human entities do the, do the things we don't enjoy doing gives us more time to do the things we do enjoy and express creativity and like be humans. Um, and I think that's pretty great. So automation, lots of good reasons to do it. Um, now I'm going to get into the aforementioned framework for uh, deciding whether you should or shouldn't automate things. Um, and there's two kind of categories of considerations for this. Let's make that a little nicer. Um, the first is practical considerations. And a lot of these are very similar to what we just saw two slides ago. Um, so like time and money are an axis on which automation is going, it's going to cost you some of that to automate something, right? It takes time to like write a script. Um, and then it's hopefully going to save you some time then when you're running that script. Um, two things to consider there are maintenance and education as well, having to maintain whatever automation you put in place and then having to teach people either the manual process or the automation. Um, but what you're really considering with this practical consideration is just, am I netting positive on each of these axes? Um, so very like material, I think a lot of us probably already kind of uh, inherently do this when we're thinking about automating something. Um, I would argue, and I think everyone here would agree, the more important considerations are the ethical considerations when you're deciding whether to automate something. And um, I try to boil these down to four questions or four kind of categories of things that I think you need to consider. Um, one is what are the impacts of automating this? Um, and a kind of related one is number three, codifying your unconscious bias. And again, going to get on my soapbox, although I know I'm preaching to the choir on this one. I think for both of these, it is key to have people who think differently than you in the room to let you know what are the impacts that are going to impact them that you don't know about. Like, how is this impacting people who are different from you? Um, unconscious bias 
uh, as the phrase says, is unconscious. And I think it takes having other people in the room to make that bias conscious and to um, tell you when uh, things that you're automating are going to have negative effects. Um, and I think we've seen this with things like facial recognition technology being uh, really biased because all of the training sets are for fair-skinned people because, uh, you know, social structures make it so that it's really hard for people of color to be in those rooms where they're, like, creating the facial recognition technology and to, to be there. Um, okay, off my soapbox, I know everyone's like, yeah, Lucy, we know. Um, but so, so these are two examples of like ethical considerations where um, you want to make sure that you're including as many people as you can in the conversation and trying to understand how is automating this going to impact all of these groups of people. Um, ultimately, this all boils down to um, the ultimate ethical question of like, are the profits and the costs of this fairly distributed? Um, and I'm going to jump back to number two a little bit because it's a little different, um, which is, are the parameters of what you're automating limited and well understood? I think that for the time being, most non-human entities um, are not great at understanding like the complexities and the context and how things change. Um, and that's a really general statement. It's not always true. But for the most part, um, I think that Automation is really great when parameters are finite um, and when there's enough of them that like I as a human can enumerate them and tell a machine um, what they are and, and how they work like succinctly. I think anything that starts to get too complex or complicated starts to be a recipe for disaster where um, something gets forgotten or overlooked. And again, we'll see examples of this in automation gone wrong section. Um, so that's another, I think, important point to keep in mind. Um, so with all of this in mind, uh, like I said, there's a lot of gray area when thinking about things not to automate. Um, but I do want to provide some of the maybe black side of some low hanging fruit for when not to automate things. Um, so one is low volume tasks. These are probably things you wouldn't even consider automating, um, but just things where it's literally not worth your time to automate it. Um, kind of going back to those XKCD comics where automating something just ends up taking so much longer than if you just did it. Um, tasks that require human context. And I think a good example of this is hiring AI where there's so many things and decision points and context and social um, like context that you take into account when you're deciding whether to hire someone that... I would argue it's not really possible to understand even everything that you're considering when you're thinking about, is this someone that I want to like be working with every day? And is this the right person for our job? Um, so tasks that require human context. Similarly, really complex tasks, which I think of as things that have a high number of decision points. Um, so anything where there's like a large fan of possible decision trees or like you're, you're considering a lot of things, I think, are, are overly complex tasks. And then high-risk tasks. Um, so anything where it's like, what's the worst-case scenario if this automation fails us? And if that's an innocent person going to jail, that's probably not a good thing for us to automate. Um, so anything that's high-risk. Okay. So with all of this in mind, let's go over a couple examples of automation gone wrong. And I'm going to start with um, the lighter, funnier uh, examples and then escalate in severity. Um, so this is a tweet by Jack Rayner. It says, Dear Amazon, I bought a toilet seat because I needed one. Necessity, not desire. I do not collect them. I am not a toilet seat addict. No matter how temptingly you email me, I'm not going to think, oh, go on then. Just one more toilet seat. I'll treat myself. <laughs> um, <laughs> And so this is a really funny example where like the automation software just doesn't know that like humans only need one toilet seat. Um, so important context. Um, this is an example. So in 2012, there's this thing called like high frequency trading, which is where, I don't know, they like trade really fast and make money or don't. I don't know. Um, and so there was an update to some of this high frequency trading automation software and it went out one morning and the company that was using it started losing $10 million a minute 
and it didn't get fixed until 45 minutes later, and they had lost $440 million. Now, my heart does not bleed for the, the rich people who didn't get richer, um, but I think this is a good example of like failure at scale, and uh, I think there's lots of examples of this with automation, right, where you're kind of trading off like the occasional error for the... Uh, or the occasional like human error that might be more common, but it's kind of one off for the less frequent but more impactful um, large scale error. I think in a better delightful example of this is like uh, typos in books, where it's like, oh, that's in every book now, and you can like date books by their typos. So good. Okay, I already talked a little bit about this, and I think a lot of us already know a lot about this story, but um, some really large corporations were using hiring AI, and they would use uh, the employees that had already been hired as their data set for successfully getting hired, which kind of makes a certain kind of sense until you realize that then you are just hiring an even more homogenous workforce, and the AI would literally turn away people who were of color um, or who were not men because it was like, well, it seems like white men are most successful here. And so <laughs> we should hire more of them. <laughs> hiring AI. Um, so I think that um, there's two ways that hiring AI really failed. And that was um, in being too complex. Again, I think this is something where there's so much context that it's really hard to communicate that to a computer effectively or to any non-human entity. And this is also really high risk. Like, you're risking both the larger social, like having people who are already disadvantaged be even more disadvantaged. Um, and also just hiring the wrong people is also really expensive and kind of terrible for your company. Um, and then this is really the most like blood boiling example, which is people, certain uh, departments have used facial recognition uh, technology in order to identify criminals. Um, and I think a lot of us know facial recognition, again, like pretty faulty, not super reliable, especially among people of color. Like it will just get people who look nothing alike, clearly distinct, very wrong. Um, and this was used to actually incarcerate a number of people. Um, and so this is a case where like Faith was put in faulty software, way too high risk, I think, to not have a human check in place and like just have due process. Like this is just a, a case where it's just not appropriate to even try to automate, I think. Um, the, like the stakes are just too high, even if it did work, like not okay. Okay, so uh, again, the, the takeaway of this talk is not to not automate, it is to automate with respect or in the spirit of the great Michael Pollan, uh, automate software, not too much, mostly maths. Hopefully some people get that reference. Okay, good. I saw some chuckles. All right, uh, I read some stuff to make this talk. All right, I think that's about my time. Thank you so much, everyone.